Hi guys, penultimate game of the season coming up in the high score kerfuffle, and last week's game was an excellent one from my perspective. And that was Flying Shark, a vertical shmup released by Taito but developed by Toa Plan in 1987. Flying Shark is a tough one at times, with a lot going on, but because the same things happen every time, then it's possible to learn the game and act accordingly. I mentioned last week that this game was highly polished, and you can really see the improvements from something like Tiger Heli in 1985 to Slap Fight in 1986 through to this in 1987. I played this a fair amount this week and gradually learned the levels. A key to doing well is powering up your weapon, which gradually gives more spread to the bullets, allowing you to take things out more easily as the majority of enemies are one hit kills. The downside of this is that if you die and go back to the basic shot, then things are much more difficult and you may end up dying again, which makes the game a bit of a one life game. Not quite as bad as Slap Fight last week or some Gradius games, as you can recover but the balance is still slightly off. My biggest issue with this game is that the plane is slightly too slow. This makes spotting and reacting to the bullets pretty difficult. As a result, you end up needing to pretty much continually move and learn the more difficult sections. I still enjoyed my time this week, but we could definitely do with something other than a shmup now to mix things up. So this is the third week in a row I've featured a home version of the arcade game we've been playing uh, this week. And here we've got the MS-DOS version. And so my plan is to yeah, include uh, these home versions when it makes sense. Um, and only when uh, their versions Alan hasn't already featured in, a, in an Arcade Perfect My Arts. So he has done an Arcade Perfect My Arts on, on Flying Child. Um, this is a version he, he hadn't featured. This is the MS-DOS version. Um, there's also an FM Towns uh, Marty version, which he also hasn't, hasn't featured. So this game came out in 1989 um, and for a you know 1987 arcade game that's a kind of about what you might expect and um, some of the other versions came out in 1988. Um, as you can see this game has the kind of 4-3 horizontal aspect which for Flying Shark isn't so bad I don't think um, because the game does um, scroll horizontally and so you can kind of show more of the playing field and kind of cut out the, the horizontal horizontal scrolling um, with this kind of wider aspect ratio. So I'm kind of not offended um, by this, but for a vertical shrimp it does make things a little diff difficult for things that, that, that kind of come out at the top of the screen. But a lot of things in this game come out from the side um, or like the tanks appear appear from the um, appear from buildings and things, and things of that sort. For me, the most noticeable thing about this game is is the colour use. Um, I guess DOS games often had these kind of quite garish colours, um, but it does kind of put me off. I think the, you know the arcade game is is very colourful, but it kind of um, has a kind of almost soft use of colours, where you know because you've got these kind of natural environments, it it generally looks quite nice. Um, but this, particularly the use of red, um, you know, on those tanks, the outlines, I don't really understand why you would choose red to outline them, it, you know, it's just, it just doesn't look right. Um, you know, use black or, or use another kind of similar colour to the colour of the, the colour of the tank. Um, regarding playing, I mean, it plays okay. I mean, you can definitely tell it is um, Flying Shark or Sky Shark, as the um, as the uh, DOS version is called, which was the the American name. There is a lot less going on than the arcade game, um, but then the arcade game is actually extremely difficult as a as a shmup. Oh, I'm not sure what killed me there. Um, yeah, it is an extremely difficult, extremely difficult game, um, and taking some of the pace out of it, I guess, um, does help. Something a bit strange, I don't know whether it's an issue with the emulation, um, but for some reason my shooting also seems to trigger firing the bombs. Um, can't, seem to, can't seem to turn that off. Um, my guess is, in the original, uh, you know, if you're playing on original hardware, I'm actually playing on emulation rather than on my on my Mister. I couldn't be bothered to to get this running on the on the Mister. Why couldn't I shoot the uh, the cannons there? That was a bit strange. Um, yeah, maybe on original hardware, it, it may not have had that issue, but it 
be an animal. It was a bit strange, but the um, oh, plane came, came in the back of me. That is one of the issues. Because you've got the short screen, the planes aren't able to kind of um, uh, sort of wiggle around you in the same way they would have done in the arcade game. They, you know, a few times I've had them just run straight into me, which is kind of annoying. Um, the bullets are fairly easy to see, which is quite nice. Oh, why couldn't I shoot that tank? Um, but it, just in terms of enjoyment, I don't know what it is. It just the game doesn't seem to play quite right. You know, the arcade game, although it's very difficult, is is very fluid, um, and it plays really plays really nicely. But but this just doesn't seem to quite play just right. Um, so yeah, let's wrap things up there. And um, yeah, this is the the uh, MS DOS version. Um, probably not one I'd recommend. Um, probably are some better versions, especially if you go and see see Alan's video. So yeah, let's um, let's go move on to the scores. We had twenty scores this week, including a return from Charlie Farr and new submission from Blue Yak Retro Computing, who has recently built himself an arcade cab and wanted to put it to use. He's down in eighteenth but there were a chunk of guys around that 100,000 mark. Retro Arcade Challenge separated himself from that bunch with 150,000, and I'm a little further on again, being the first into the 200,000s, and have finished 11th. Sinisteve makes a return, and he rounds out the top 10. Arcade GG and Mark are also in that 200,000 range. My Retro Tech has his best finish in 7th, and the only one in the 300,000s. League Z is in 6th with 400,000, and then Juff is just ahead in 5th. The returning Charlie Farr is in 4th, who streamed this game on Saturday. He did 400,000 on his first credit, which is nuts, but then struggled to match that until his last run. In 3rd is Robert, who takes his best finish of the season with 450,000. In 2nd is the ever-present Graham, who I thought might take the win this week. But coming in late last night, with this week's winning score, is KMA. I believe this is his first ever win, and on this game, which has been pretty competitive, that's a great result. Here is the distribution of the scores. Interestingly, we have two or even three separate groupings. On the left, we have the people who scored around 100,000, then a bit of a gap to those that scored two to 300,000, and then those on the right finishing over 400,000. Our top three are all in the same bin, showing it was a good effort from each of those guys, but our top seven all did very well and weren't separated by much. And now the difficulty curve. We see a gradual increase on the left to our first plateau, reflecting our group at around 100,000, which is dying on level 2. Then a bit of a jump to around 200,000, which is dying on level 3. And then finally, a bit of a jump again to our top guys in the 400,000 plus range. There are a few plateaus, but it's also somewhat linear, as you might expect from a linear scoring game like this. And here is how things progressed over the week. KMA was our early pace setter, putting in 440,000 as the score to beat. As the week progressed, Graham took the lead after a strong start, which was bettered once more by KMA to take this week's win last night. Robert, you can see, made progress on day one before increasing things further last night to take third. It doesn't look like Juff put as much time in as some weeks. He upped things around midweek, and then we didn't hear from him again. I enjoyed this but did struggle as you can see me up things over the first few days before stopping a few days ago. I'd narrowly overtaken Mark, who moved things on not long after I'd stopped. Finally, Leaksy was our big late mover, jumping up to 6th last night. We've got two games left, and here is how the table is looking. Charlie Farr isn't included here after his 4th place this week, as he won't be meeting the 5 game minimum for the season, and I've adjusted the scores accordingly. My Retro Tech has gained a place with his excellent finish this week, and Sinisteve has got ahead of Bob. We've got two big movers after some good results. Robert is up three with that third place finish. He's up to eighth. Eighth to eleventh are all pretty close. KMA is the other big mover. He made gains last week after a second place, and is up another three with that win, and has joined the battle for third. And it's close all the way down to Colin in sixth. At the top, things are much the same. Juff is still in second place, but leading, and increasing the gap after it narrowed in recent weeks, is Graham. He's over 100 points ahead now, and unless Juff finishes ahead this week, he'll be taking the season win. Let's now see what this week's game is. I've had 17 games sent to me this week, 
and the most popular game was Atari Tetris, which had four submissions, and New Zealand Story, which had two. Our winner this week, KMA, submitted Nark, which gets its probability trebled. We've had three shmups in a row now, so something different would be good. So let's set things going and see what we get. Okay, slowing down. Oh, could be Nark. Is it going to be... Oh, it's flipped over to Twin Eagle from Robert. Um, so I actually don't know what this game is. Is it another shmup? Um, I mean, Robert picked Slap Fight and he was a big fan um, of this week's game. Um, so yeah, I'll go look Twin Eagle up, make a video and be back in a sec. So the arcade gods really want us to play shmups this season. And this week we are playing Twin Eagle, developed by Sita and published once again by Tato in 1988. And it's another vertical shmup. This game is notable as one of the first to use pre-rendered sprites, something that became quite common in the late 16-bit and early 32-bit eras. Generally games using this approach haven't aged well, but this one I think looks alright, albeit a fair bit different compared to the games which we've been playing. It also makes significant use of digitised sound, which is another different touch compared to the previous games that we've had, so there's a fair amount going on in the sound department. A quick play, and this game seems fine. The power-up system seems decent, with upgrades to your shot and speed available, and something interesting is the limited time missile upgrades that you can get. These are much more powerful, but their use is limited. So not too much to say about this one, let's see how everyone gets on. Also please get your 1989 games to me, there are some good ones to choose from. And I'll be back next week with the final game of the season. See you then. Ooh.